We are most alive, we have the most energy, we are most intimate with our best selves when we're progressing towards our mighty mission. I think what's happened on the planet right now is there's been a great seduction and a great brainwashing. When we are kids, we want, we want to be astronauts. We want to do all our dreams and we're full of curiosity and we're loving and we're passionate and we're strong. We're not afraid to be ourselves. But as we leave the perfection of childhood, the hypnosis and the brainwashing begin. Be reasonable, so that's our nature, but our parents give us limitation based on their limited psychology and don't sing too loudly, don't dream too big, don't be too passionate. As we've left who we truly are, we've contracted. And now it's all about staying safe in the world versus going out there and letting our brilliant, our primal genius shine. And a lot of people just have stuffed that pain of disappointment and their doubt really deep inside. And they just are addicted to distraction and escapes because they don't want to deal with their potential that they've denied. What's the most important key to success? I think it's hunger. It's, it's not getting satisfied. A hunger that doesn't go, a hunger to learn, a hunger to grow, a hunger to serve, a hunger to give, a hunger to create breakthroughs. Most people are hungry till they make a certain amount of money and then they get comfortable. And there's nothing wrong with that, it's, but it's not about the money. It's not about the business. It's about your growth. Because every one of us either grows or dies. People ask me all the time, what does it take to be happy? I say one word, progress. Progress equals happiness. Because achieving a goal feels good for how long? A week, a month? three months, and then there needs to be something else. And the reason for something else is because you got to grow. I want to, I want to find more, all I can. And in that sack of sh you have to dive in that to find more. Because if you're not willing to go in there and face yourself, I can find anything. You can live right here on surface, man, right here on surface. So if there is an ending to this world and there is somewhere to go and there's a judgment, you're gonna get there and you might see a chart and that chart may tell you who the you should have been. And now you get the rest of your life to think about that. Now I could have lived a much better life. I just would have just suffered a little bit more. Success is not gonna show up at your front door and not going and say, here I am. It's not coming to look for you. In fact, success is not thinking about you. Success is already doing its job. You got to be willing to do your job. Each and every day that you are breathing in this world, each and every day that you are doing something in this world, you should be focusing on getting better, not worse. You should be understanding that, hey, I can't be this same person on a day in, day out type of way. I have got to cut, I got to keep focusing and going further and going harder and going stronger and pushing myself till there's nothing else left to push for. So now is the time for you to hit the gym of your life and start exercising your self-discipline muscle. No more talk, no more excuses. From this moment forward, it's all about massive execution. Would there be days that you don't feel like it? Yes. Would it be days that you want to stop? Yes. Would it be days that you want to give up? Yes. Would it be days that you want to quit? Yes. Listen to me. Quitting is never an option. We've all bought into a lie. We've bought into a lie that confidence is belief in self. And so when you're in a situation which is normal, where you don't believe in yourself, you're like, oh my God, I have no confidence. The truth is, and I want you to walk out of here with a new definition of confidence. Confidence is the willingness to try. Because when you try and you take action, what happens and what's happened for France is that when she sees herself taking action, what happens is she sees herself being the kind of person that takes action. So she has evidence that she can rely on herself. And that action is what builds confidence. It doesn't start with belief. The real way, the real way for most of us is not to wait to believe, but to push ourselves to act. And through the action, you will build the belief. We're built to walk uphill. And when you reach the pinnacle of the hill, you want to stop and appreciate the vision. But the next thing you want is a higher hill in the distance because 
it's the uphill climb that it's it's from the uphill climb that we derive our value and i mean this technically so almost all the positive emotion we feel especially the 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 emotion that fills us with enthusiasm, and that's to be filled with the Spirit of God, by the way, because that's what enthusiasm means. That's experienced in relationship to a goal. And so in some sense, and this is part of the religious enterprise, you want a goal that you can never attain, right? So you can always move closer to the goal that recedes as you move towards it. You think, well, that's frustrating. It's like Sisyphus pushing the rock uphill. But it's not, because as you pursue that goal, you put yourself together and your life does get better and richer and more abundant. And that's why the highest levels of virtue and goal are in some sense transcendent. You want them to be above everything you're doing so you can continually move towards something that's more sublime and better. That's what you are. You're, you're here to live, not to, not to sleep. I didn't study, like, you know, I didn't study a book. I literally put myself in a fire repeatedly like a sword. You put a sword in a fire repeatedly and repeatedly. If you, if you keep on doing that, you're going to get a nice sword. And then you keep on beating it. You got to beat the shit out of it. <laughs> and that's what I am. Yeah. I, I became that. I, I, I said, okay, we, we can't quit. We got to figure out why you are this. Thing. Why are you this thing, man? What is wrong with you? What's going on here? So I kept on putting the sword back in the daggone fire. And I just beat it harder. And I beat it harder. Before I knew it, I started realizing, hmm, all right, man. The brain is starting to get hard. The brain is starting to get hard. I'm no longer a theorist. I'm now a practitioner. I put it in hell. I dissect it while it's in hell because you can't dissect anything in a normal environment. You can't dissect anything in 72 degree weather. You must right. put it in the freezer and freeze the f out of it. And then you dissect it. Dissect it when it's miserable. Dissect the brain when all it's thinking about is I need to get out of here, man. I want to get out of the freezer. Open the door. And he said, nah, five more seconds, man. Five more seconds in the freezer. And that's when you start to pick that brain apart. And that's what all this stuff did to me. I kept on putting myself back into the freezer or the fire and beating the out of myself, mentally and physically. Before I knew it, this is what happened. Ralph Waldo Emerson believed that anyone who had put their heart and soul into their work and had done their very best, could hold their head up high. Merely talking about it or only putting in a modicum of effort wasn't good enough in his mind. It was all or nothing. He believed that doing your best was an admirable quality and that although you might not always be successful, knowing that you had done all you could was often all that mattered. At least you could look yourself in the eye. This ethos is central to many youth movements, such as the Scouts and Guides, and is a great philosophy for life in general. Indeed, doing your absolute best in everything you do is something that we should all aspire to, and it doesn't matter if it's at school, university, work or home. If you think about it, doing your best is also central to self-reliance, because it allows you not only to test your capabilities, but also helps you to learn and therefore extend them. It's only when you are at the edge of your ability that you can really test your mettle and see just how much you can depend on yourself. Only ever working inside your comfort zone or doing just enough to get by may be easy, but is rarely rewarding. And it never allows you to develop into a fully rounded person or realize your full potential. The following quote from Theodore Roosevelt sums up the essence of Emerson's point. It is not the critic who counts nor the man who points out how the strong man stumbled or where the doer of deeds could have done better. The credit belongs to the man who is actually in the arena, whose face is marred by dust and sweat and blood, who strives valiantly, who errs and comes up short again and again. Who knows the great enthusiasms, the great devotions and spends himself in a worthy cause? Who at the best knows in the end triumph of high achievement and who at worst, if he fails while daring greatly, so that his place shall never be with those cold and timid souls who know neither defeat or victory. When you are working on your next task, give it your full concentration and really put the effort in to produce the best possible end result. Even if it doesn't lead to glittering success, you should be proud of yourself for doing your very best. No man fails who does his best.